Hey, 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 everybody. So here we are at the Animal Rights Conference 2018, and I am with the super fab, super awesome. I've learned so much from him. I am oh, so wow. grateful for him. Uh, James Asprey, he is in the house in What's here, up? Venice, Yo. California. Uh, peace and out, like he always does. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have a boatload of time today. I'm going to kind of get right to the chase. Let's get to business. Get to business, mister. So tell the world, because my folks are vegan and maybe not vegan, they're a little mm -hmm. bit both. Tell the world how you got to be the awesome activist that you are. Okay, um, well thank you. I started my vegan journey when I was working on a cruise, a cruise ship mm -hmm. and I met somebody who told me that eating animals is bad karma, mm -hmm. which made me think, oh man, I don't know about that, but there's no way to be healthy without eating meat. You know, I was a personal trainer for seven, eight years believing that was true. I went vegetarian for a seven day experiment. I felt amazing. I found that the food was actually good, which I was not expecting. I thought I was just gonna be eating lettuce and tofu. And then I watched a documentary called Earthlings, which shows all the ways that humans exploit and kill animals for food, clothing, entertainment, and medical testing. And then I decided to stay vegetarian for the animals, even though I was not an animal lover, I just didn't want them to be suffering and murdered because of my actions. So soon later, I had an idea to take a year-long vow of silence and to do that to raise awareness for animals, the voiceless victims of this planet, even though now I realize they're actually not voiceless. You know, they scream, they cry, they communicate with each other and talk. It was just a voice, you know, their voices aren't really paid attention to or considered as important in our human-centric society. So I took this vow of silence. Um, during that year though, planning for it, I realized that I was not doing enough by being a vegetarian. Mm. You know, there's at least as much cruelty in dairy and eggs and leather and all that kind of thing as there is in meat. And it didn't make sense to be against animal cruelty while supporting any animal cruelty. So I did what every vegan does, which is to avoid animal products as far as practically possible, which is actually very easy. Instead of getting soy milk, uh, sorry, instead of getting cow's milk, I just get soy or rice or almond or coconut milk. Instead of getting meat on my burrito with sour cream, I'd get the black beans on my burrito with guacamole. With some avocado. Yeah, exactly, easy and delicious still and much healthier and no animals have to die. And yeah, I did my vow of silence, which is a year long no speaking vow and I traveled around Australia in that time. I also cycled 3,000 miles across Australia to show that on a plant-based diet you can be healthy, strong, fit and do athletic things. There's many vegans out there who are also shattering that stereotype including the world record holding strongman, Mr. Universe of a few years ago, world champion, ultra marathoner and countless others. Yeah. And yeah, then I broke my vow of silence on uh, live TV in Australia, which was an interview seen by tens of millions of people all up. It's on my YouTube channel. And I, you know, I just basically my first words were that, you know, we should be kinder to animals because they are just like us. They're, we are animals too. They're covered in feathers or scales or wings or fur, but that is no reason to not take their suffering seriously. And the way that we treat them is, you know, if you took the animals out of these factory farms and you put humans in there, we're looking at the Holocaust. And what we're looking at right now with the animal Holocaust is eight billion lives taken every single day for foods and products that not only we don't need, but that we're far better off without, far healthier without, and our environment would be much better off without as well. Yes, so that's more than people on the earth, actually. So those are some incredible statistics. and. It it's very strange to me, and I wonder when you are out um, being an activist talking to people, I wonder how you talk to them about how they might have pets mm -hmm. and really love those pets and then be like, yeah, but I don't register at all cows, which have incredible social communities, and pigs, which are much smarter than dogs and mm. so family-oriented. How, how do you sort of gauge that conversation? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because the most time that most people have spent with the animals that they eat is when they're on their plate. A lot of people have never spent time, including myself, at the, at the time when I started learning about this, they had never spent time with cows, pigs, or chickens, or even fish. And they're the animals that we really come into contact with the most, but it's their dead bodies or their secretions that we come into contact with. A lot of people have dogs, though. And if somebody saw a dog being abused, 
they would be straight over there to do something about it. People feel that their dogs are part of their family, that they're their babies. And that's because you know, they are, they're part of the family. They're, they have their own um, way of interacting, which is full of love and joy and you know, loyalty. And all animals have different ways of you know, being important, if to nobody else but to themselves. They, they all have value, whether it's a, the way that a dog has value or the way that a human has value or the way that a chicken has value. So if you can see why it would be wrong to hurt a dog or if somebody came and slaughtered your dog, your, your family member, and that would affect you, you can also understand and put that same logic to, well, just because I don't know those chickens and they haven't been a part of my family for the last seven years, I can still understand that that is an individual, a non-human person with their own heart and their own brain and their own feelings and their own community, just like my dog. And if I wouldn't want my dog to be hurt, then I shouldn't pay somebody else to hurt them. And even more than that, it's about you. If you wouldn't want that done to you, if you wouldn't want to be pushed through a slaughterhouse, how do you justify paying somebody else to put someone else through their violent murder when it's completely unnecessary for any reason? I think what's most compelling to me is sort of the simple fact that they suffer. And it's well established, scientific study after scientific study. So for any naysayer out there, which I think would be hard to, to naysay that animals don't suffer, but if anyone's out there, there's a gazillion studies on mm -hmm. this. And suffering is suffering is suffering. It's sort of like an absolute number, you know, negative three and positive three are both at the value of three on the number line. And animals suffer just like we suffer. Yeah. And I think, you know, in the US we have this surge of violence. And I think if you are teaching, that it's okay to create suffering and to cause violent harm to one sector of the population of our earth, mm. you're going to get violence elsewhere. Of course. So I think there's so many reasons beyond the animal suffering, which for me is like, that's all I need. But beyond the animal suffering, you know, there's the environmental issues, there are our own health issues. And I think as we raise our kids and we think about a violent society, you're not gonna get rid of violence in our society, I don't think, towards people, if you are actively advocating not for violence close. against animals. Think about what the number one cause of death on this planet is. It's suffocation from animals that are brought out of the sea. When it comes to land animals, the number one cause of death on planet Earth is throat slitting. That's what kind of environment we have here. The surrounding areas of slaughterhouses, which you think about what a slaughterhouse worker does, their job is to kill and dismember sentient beings just like us with eyes that are looking at them and babies that are suckling on their, on their thumbs, things like that. Without anesthesia? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And these surround, the studies show that the surrounding areas of slaughterhouses have increased rates of violent crime, of suicide, of drug abuse, of these things that create problems in our society. In 2018, we should not be getting food the same way we did when we were cavemen, beating someone over the head and then cutting their head off. You know, that's what we're still doing when, when to get from here to the other side of the world, I get my phone out and someone just arrives because of this satellite thing that happened and I fly, but we still get food by slitting throats. This is 2018, we don't need to do that for any reason. We even have foods now that mimic the taste and texture of meat, of dairy, of eggs, of ice cream, whatever. Beyond Meat, been yeah. on this show. Tastes the same, looks the same, smells the same, made of plants, no cholesterol, no death, no dis much less destruction of the environment. So the question isn't really, oh, why are you vegan? Which a lot of people ask, but the question is more, why would you not be vegan? What what are you clinging on to? Because it's so much better in all the ways. I, I always struggle with that too. And I, you know, this is a happy podcast for lack of a better expression. You know, we're here to talk about awesome vegans and all the awesome things they do and all the things they do to help make our place cool. a better place for people, for animals, for the environment. But I struggle with that when it seems to me and, you know, I ain't no genius, so I'm open to all conversations. It's not like I've got the answer to everything, but when I look at all the information, it seems like, wait a minute, it's better for our health, it's better for the animals, it's better for the environment, it's better for our kids. The taste oh, hold on. Is amazing. We haven't even talked about, it's better for our wallet. 
In the US, we subsidize things that then make us sick. We subsidize dairy and meat, and then that dairy and meat makes us ill, and oh, guess what? We pay that bill too. So if you're yeah, thinking you're- Then we get on the medications, we take days off work, uh, life is shorter. Disease and, like yeah. how, much, how much value is there on the days of your life? Because you could potentially live decades longer the leading cause of death is heart disease. Heart That's dis meat, people. Yeah, and the only diet that has ever been proven to reverse heart disease in the majority of patients is a plant-based diet. We could reverse the biggest killer in the majority of humans by just getting the... We still have cereal for breakfast. We still have burritos. We still have cake. We still have pasta. We still have pizza. We just have the vegan versions of those foods. So you don't even really have to change what you eat. You just change which item you buy, the one made from the violence and death of animals or the one made from plants that taste and looks exactly the same. That's, that's, that's what also 2018 brings. These delicious foods at Trader Joe's and Costco and these places that you can you go look for these vegan options and, and try them and they're, and they're delicious. Everywhere. Yeah. So uh, you know where we stand. Uh, but let's talk maybe about some tips for people because I just find like it's easier than ever and I get it. You know, you you're trying to send your kids to college, you probably both are working jobs and then someone someone's driving Uber on the weekend too, so you're working like two and a half jobs and you're trying to cook for your kids and like you just can't take one more thing on your plate to like add to your mm. list of things to do. Mm. I totally get that. So uh, if it's too much to think about and if there's just too, you know, nobody wants to feel bad and we're not trying to make you feel bad, you'll come to it at your own pace when you think like, hey, I want my diet to like work a little better for me and I want to mm. feel a little better. I want to get up in the morning and have a little bit more energy. Meat, you know, getting rid of meat will do that for you. So when you, when you come to it yourself, if you uh, haven't come to it already, here are some tips to make it super, super easy. So I got a bunch, but I want to hear yours first. What cool. are your tips for going cool. Vegan. Okay, one of the one of the first. I mean, let's say that you do have a little bit of time. I would highly recommend getting educated because that will give you the motivation. So, just a few documentaries I would recommend that you could watch. Maybe one documentary a week for three weeks. You could watch Earthlings, Cowspiracy, and Forks Over Knives. Earthlings is on the ethics of what happens to animals. Highly motivational. Cowspiracy is on the environmental destruction caused by animal agriculture and how much better the world would be if we all ate plant-based diet. And Forks Over Knives is based on the largest study ever conducted on the relationship between nutrition and disease. And the bottom line for that, just to give you a spoiler, is that the optimal diet is a plant-based diet for health and longevity. They're, Boom! They're three great documentaries to watch. If you join Challenge 22, which is a free 22-day vegan challenge, 20, it's at challenge22.com, you'll get a mentor and join a Facebook group where they, any question you've got, what, what, do I, what am I gonna eat tonight? What am I gonna buy here? What if I go to this restaurant? What do I do when I go to my friend's house? Any question you've got, you ask and they'll answer it for you. And that's what they're there for, it's totally free. There's also a registered dietitian who will answer any of your questions as well. So that's a really great resource for people who don't really have time to do the Googling themselves, don't know what to eat, don't really know any recipes. You join challenge22.com and everything you need will be flooded to you. If you don't really feel like joining a mentor program, um, you can go to vegankit.com and that's a one-stop shop for all the information you need on how to go vegan. It's got recipes, it's got um, supermarket lists, it's got all kinds of things to make it really, really easy for you. It seems daunting, I know, but generally going vegan is as easy as instead of getting cow's milk, you go to the same supermarket, you go down the same aisle, you go to the same spot and you just get the soy milk instead. It's usually right next to it. Um, instead of having meat, try having tofu, try having some of these... Um, vegan meats that are out there like garden chicken strips and all these different things that are made from plants that taste like chicken so you could still have your meat and three veg it's just vegan meat you can still have your creamy pasta it's just made from vegan cheese for example super good yeah. I'll just uh, add to that and say for all you mamas out there so you know how you love your babies give your baby stuff that doesn't isn't gonna cause them antibiotic resistance later and also you know, as a mom, you know what it's like to love your baby and cows have such a strong bond with their babies and they rip them away from their mothers and then impregnate them again and then rip them away. And their life is constant depression and pain. Don't want to overdo yeah. it here for you, but dairy boy, industry, mamas, dairy industry is it's, it's, it's 
Darren Street would be the worst. And mamas opinion. know. Mamas know about their babies. So, mm. uh, And then I'll say my other tip is uh, hit me up because I got lots of recipes to share. I'm happy to share them. And, you know, ain't no shame in this ga ba game, baby. So you, you hop on. And then if you fall off one day, no big deal. Whatever. We're it here. Happens. You get right back on. Yep. And don't take it all in one day. Say so there's this thing called Meatless Monday. Hashtag, I know you know about it. Yep. Meatless Monday, see how you feel. That Meatless Monday becomes like, hey, Meatless totally. Friday, which you kind of do anyway if you're following some religions. They kind of do that anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're like, oh, I feel kind of better. I, it, it's a, yeah. funny to me that people sort of resist sometimes a vegan challenge because my same friends who resist a vegan challenge do these cleanses. And I go, well, holy cow, on the cleanse, you had no food. I'm giving you lots of food options. Because mm. here's one thing I found when I went vegan. I thought, oh, gosh, what am I going to eat? And I realized I had so many more food choices when I went vegan because I yeah. had been eating meat and dairy and that keeps you kind of addicted, for lack of a better word, to meat and dairy. So all I was eating was the same meat and dairy. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have any variety. But then I was like, oh my God, sweet potatoes, yeah, there's eggplants, so many greens, Brussels sprouts, there's so hold many up, grains, there's so many and, beans, yes, right. all these things all I've these, never have eaten. Yes, lentils. I yeah, never, yeah, I never yeah. I'm embarrassed. Kidney beans, I chickpeas. never had lentils. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And now right, I right. like tofu. I used to think tofu was disgusting. <laughs> all, all I knew of tofu was in your miso soup when you get sushi. Yeah, right. There's those little squishy <laughs> cubes. But you can get tofu that's like firm, and yeah. you marinate it with some peanut sauce or with some um, sweet chili sauce or something. It's delicious. Awesome. It's chewy. It's meaty. It's I love so awesome. tofu. I never thought I'd say that in I my know. life. <laughs> Another thing you can do, similar to Meatless Mondays. Just choose a vegan meal for breakfast. It might be something simple like oats with blueberries and crushed walnuts with a bit of maple syrup. It's delicious. Or you could choose avocado on toast or peanut butter on toast or a smoothie, a green smoothie with some bananas, blueberries, mango, some spinach, something like that. Um, and when you've got a few, when you've got, yeah, easy, quick as, when you've got a few recipes for breakfast sorted, okay, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to get some lunch recipes now. You choose some, um, some like a, a uh, vegan curry or it could be a vegan stir fry or maybe like just a Reuben sandwich with vegan burrito. Yeah, or a burrito or like a tofu scramble or what even kind of just it? something I make that's really simple. I'll just roast some sweet potatoes, I cut them in half and I pour some a can of beans in there with some chopped up avocado. That's what I do too. Delicious, great S meal. Sweet Cheap potato house. black bean burrito? Oh, yes. Awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And I gotta say, I make very serious vegan gyros, and it's pretty Ooh, damn awesome. I bet it is. And then uh, mole, I do a mole sauce that's vegan. Super good, super good. Okay, we are on short time here, so I am moving right along okay, to my move. very famous uh, one word answers if you can. If you can't, it's okay, because some of these are a little bit longer than that, but okay. um, we'll try to go. What is your favorite snack? Could be healthy, could be junk food, up to you. One word though? Do it. <laughs> Banana do it. ice cream. <laughs> Good for you. Okay, banana ice cream. Yeah. Favorite go-to meal? Like you don't have a lot of time and you uh -huh. make it at home. It's something you can always rely on. Every time you make it, it's good. It's fast. It's your go-to meal. Roast potatoes. <laughs> okay. One expression. Maybe yeah, not one word. Yeah, that's bad. One word's hard. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> limiting really me too much. <laughs> Roast, roast potatoes. potatoes. I'll just chuck potatoes in, bring them out, and I'll just eat them like that. I love oh, them like that. Bit so of salt, good. bit of pepper. So yeah. good. Yeah. Awesome for you. What item are we always going to find in your fridge? Hopefully, frozen bananas. Okay. Because I'm always making smoothies and making like banana ice cream. Just with you'd, All you have to do to make banana ice cream is blend frozen bananas with a splash of soy milk, and it's thick and delicious and it's really like healthy. It's like it's, that's the best thing I ever learned. I have that for breakfast most days with a bit of um, tahini or peanut butter on there. So good. So you, good. I hope you always find frozen bananas or avocado, ripe avocado. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so now we're getting out of the one expression realm. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't do good with that anyway. No, you did. You did. Oh, you okay. did. I think we kind of know the answer to this. Yep. Do you have any pets and do you think there's any difference between pets and farm animals? I do not have any pets because I travel the world constantly. There is a difference between pets and farm animals, but it's only in the way that most people in society view them ethically or morally. There's no difference. There's no difference. Yeah. Absolutely no difference. Okay. Do you know what your true purpose is? And if so, what is it? Ooh, okay. I think I made a quite clear intention a few years ago that I think still reigns quite true. My intention is to contribute to making the, this world a kind of more peaceful place for us all to live and to be an instrument of truth and peace. And I strive to do that every day. 
Thank you for that, kind sir. My pleasure. Now, this is a little bit the same, but enough different that I'm going to ask it. Hmm. What bit of change in the world would you like to be known for? Um, I would like to be known for... Really, because I can't think of a more important message. I'd like to be known for spreading the vegan message in a way that reaches as many people as possible. I want to be known, yeah, that's because that's what I think is the most important work we can be doing right now. Because people think, oh, well, I don't really care about animals. It's not just about animals. It's about human health. It's about sustainability on this planet. It is about animals and not creating so much violence in this world. So to me, that's the most important cause. It helps in countless different ways human and non-human animals and you know that's what I work towards every day so if I can be known for leaving you know creating waves and helping a lot of people go vegan I'd be super happy with that I'll add a little side note I just finished an interview with Team USA volleyball champion Dustin Watton and he said as a professional athlete you have a lot of anger because you're always saying to the other team like I'm gonna get you and you're gonna be smacked down and and he said when he changed to a plant-based diet which he did solely for health because he had read a lot how he was gonna be more competitive as an athlete on a plant-based diet which is so true because your muscles recover faster very hard to, for your muscles to recover on meat. So much better as an athlete. You perform better on a plant-based diet. So he's found that when he went plant-based, his anger went away. Mm. Well, when Interesting, you, right? If you're consuming a product of with stress, you know, these animals are stressed until their last moment. They thrash, they scream, they high fight cortisol. for their life. Yeah, they, these, these high-stress hormones are going into this meat or this milk or these eggs. And we're putting these products of violence and stress and fear into us, okay. of course, that's what we're building our body from and that is most definitely going to affect us. What do you wish you knew 10 years ago that you know now? What do I wish I knew 10 years ago? Um, I mean, obviously the vegan stuff, but I guess as well, I, I didn't know I, I was living in a bubble where I grew up. I thought everything was fine and I lived my life just, just purely for myself, you know, having fun. And I guess I wish I knew back then how much is still wrong with this world and also that we all have an obligation, a responsibility to help others the way that we'd want to be helped if we were in that situation. I think I'll just throw out there, if there's one thing I realized recently with our election here in the U.S., doesn't matter how you vote, if you're voting to the left or you're voting to the right, what I realized is that they so don't care about you. So if you want to take control of the health for yourself and your family, you have got to advocate for yourself. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself on pills and paying health bills and addicted to industries that pretty much lie to you, meat and dairy, pretty much lie right Not to you. Not even pretty much. Thank you. Very I'm deliberately. I'm very being deliberately. nice and smiling. Of of course okay. they're going to. They want to sell their products to you. They want you to think the only place to get protein is from meat. The only place you can get calcium is from dairy. Of course they want you to think that. They want you to buy all their products. Remember people back in the day, the government told you smoking was good for you. Right. And they got so doctors, doctors to do the exactly. same. So you got to advocate for yourself. Mwah. I want you to advocate for yourself. Our very last question as we're on the run here, your future predictions could be for tomorrow, could be for 10 years from now, but what prediction would you like to make for the future, be it veganism or something else? Sure, I think that um, a lot more people these days are starting to realize that there are a lot of cracks in our system and a lot of problems and a lot of lies we've been told and a lot of conditioning that's been forced upon us, a lot of propaganda, a lot of advertising that has you know, shaped how we view our world. And I think people are definitely starting to become more savvy to that and to you know, just question things more. And those questions, I believe, will lead to uh, a society of people that are making better choices because currently we're just making the choices, a lot of us are making the choices we're told to make and they're not the best choices. And when we start, because they're, they're the best choices for the people who are trying to make money off us, trying to get us to consume, trying to get us to purchase and buy, trying to keep us sick so that we'll buy their, you know, we'll, we'll spend money on surgeries, it will be, um, buying these medications for the rest of our life, etc. I think when we start really asking ourselves these questions of, you know, what, what's going on around here and am I okay with it and well, what can I do about it? I think we're going to see just a, an army of people who are 
making better choices that will trickle down and lead to less suffering, less violence, more peace, more compassion, more unity. And a big part of that is the vegan movement. And you know what we're seeing in the vegan movement now, even in the last five years, is incredible. And 10 years from now, when we have, the, the, it's just at least as convenient to be vegan. The food is better, which I already think it's way better, the food. You know, so yeah, I just can't imagine that this is, I can't imagine that we won't have a vegan world at some point, whether it's in 10 years or 100 years, it, it's the only logical thing, in my opinion, that will happen. And I like to think we're a logical society, so I hope it's soon. I would add to that that I never would have thought I would have said that in the last year because we've had a lot of negative news in the US, but I think the future is bright because I think it is the time of education of the individual and no longer are people blindly accepting what this politician says or this business says or this doctor says. With Thank you, Google. With the internet, it's really the time of the education of the individual and with education, everyone's going to make the choice that's better for them and the choice that's better for them is a better planet, a better health, and ultimately that's better for animals and better for our kids and better for our wallets. Yep. So I actually think the future is bright. I do. I do too. I know. I'm feeling very optimistic. I know. Yeah, a lot of good things are happening. We have to run because it's Animal Rights Conference 2018. This interview is part one. Part two, we're going to have uh, another wonderful person later this afternoon. So this is kind of my wrap up for AR 2018. I want to thank James Astry for my taking my survey, answering my questions. Mm -hmm. Go to YouTube. Go find him. Go to his website, jamesasprey.com. Is that right? .com.au. .com.au. And then, of course, people, subscribe here to YouTube. Subscribe to Awesome Vegans on iTunes. Subscribe to my channel, Elizabeth Alfano, on YouTube. Find me on WGN Radio, Vegan Magazine. I love you. And as always, don't forget to be vegan. Nice one. Catch bye us folks. later. Bye-bye.